Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to episode number 156 of the Terminus Podcast. <laughs> this is for the weeks of March 6th, 2021, and this is going to be a speedrun podcast. Let's see. Uh, I am your dispatcher, Ellis, otherwise known as the Admiral. With me, I have my engineer, Brett Weebold, and my fireman, TJ Sicosio and Jared Cole. Uh, returning as our brakeman is Tyler. Hello. And that's everybody. The train will terminate at this station. Okay, this week we are in Norway. It's in Valheim. We're playing a game. We're looking at the game. We're going really fast. <laughs> Odin's beard, slow down. <laughs> He's trying to build a house. That was... my, my cousin's trying it's to build a house. It's going on. Uh, bed is too Red exposed. Bed. Rip. House All right. building. Okay, so... I... I uh, Weibold said that too fast and did not give me time to set up the Cargo's document, so... Now we're just going <laughs> to... <laughs> you run podcast. Come on, no, yeah, no. watching Valheim this week, which so, I have not seen myself, but I've heard it's very good. Dude, I, it's epic. I love this. Game. I too have heard that it's very good. I mean, it it blew up in terms of size. Literally, it blew blew up. No, Kaboom. not literally. No, I, I mean, <laughs> in a month, studio exploded. In, like, in less than one month of this game being released has blown up past 5 million players. That's nuts. <laughs> um, it is nuts. H-E-I-M. Okay. So, class on mental responsibility. This is fun. Uh, we actually have a pretty major one. I know sometimes some weeks I talk about, ah, there was nothing really entertaining this week. But uh, the one that we have four different articles on was a gigantic a explosion. <laughs> Was um, oh, this the Texas one? I think no, so. Yeah. The game studio that made Valheim. Oh, that was the this is the game studio that released Valheim, of course. Yes. Yeah. Yes, they this is the one I was exploded. thinking of. It's just north of Austin. Yeah. Anyway, uh, but starting from the beginning on uh, uh, February nineteenth, a train which had the Wabash Heritage Unit Heritage Unit trailing hit a truck. So there's that. Uh, let's see, what's the next one? The next one is February 23rd, this was CSX, uh, they had a minor derailment in Wilmington, and, uh, the only thing noteworthy about that is somebody in the comments was like, Joe Biden did this. Uh, <laughs> God damn it, Joe Biden, why did you do damn that? It, Joe Biden, he's cackling by the side of the tracks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, no, we <laughs> Jesus. There we go. Joe yeah. Biden is secretly Grandpa Simpson. Uh, <laughs> old man yells at oil trains. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but then we had the explosion of the week. That is, a train carrying fuel exploded after colliding with the... Explosion of the week. Okay, TBA is dying. No, I'm sorry, I'm choking on water. He's got the Rona. <laughs> no, I'm choking on water, I'm sorry. Get him! <laughs> oh, I'm good. Onto the FEMA train with you! <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> the Amtrak boxcar. Glad, yeah. glad to know that's what's gonna happen. Get in the Amtrak okay, boxcar. Go Off to New Haven with you. <laughs> You're going to New Haven. <laughs> Going down, choking. Oh, all right, he's just playing. Man, I could really, I could really make a terrible joke about just to knock on the city of New Haven here, but I'm not going to do it. Uh, but yeah, we don't want to get banned from New Haven. Actually, that would be bad. I mean, it would just, it would. <laughs> it'd would make, it? It'd make getting it. It, it would make getting to uh, my nana's house a little, a little more difficult. So I would like if we don't get banned. I mean, we always <laughs> go over like Route Six and Eighty Four, so. Yeah, but like Route 95 goes right through New Haven, and there's also an IKEA there. <laughs> the other one, <laughs> and also like there's like a, a Jordan's furniture there, and they have a ropes course inside the Jordan's furniture. I mean, like I, I don't really want to get banned. Listen, I don't care what you say. You're not voluntarily making me go to New Haven. Uh, so <laughs> I, I, right across the street, DMs. they have food trucks too. There was a massive explosion in Texas. 
Uh, oh, DMs, yes. but don't show the audience. Right. Okay. Is is this that that isn't what I was thinking? But that's. <laughs> okay. that's, that's I'm Never not sure if that. it's worse or better. Uh, okay, anyway. God damn it, now I'm curious. Man, that would have been the podcast <laughs> title, but I'm glad you haven't said it out loud. We're not saying it out uh-huh. loud. Uh, so anyway, um, uh, BNSF train exploded as a result of the crash. Uh, out of a total of 110 cars, 13 derailed. Five were carrying gasoline and still on fire. No injuries to the crew or truck driver, which, based on this massive fireball, I'm pretty surprised about. Uh, But we have, like, four different videos of it, too, so that's great. The following day, there were two derailments, one by CSX. Actually, no, that's wrong. There was only one crash, and it's for CSX and NS, because it's a collision between a CSX train and an NS train. Uh, Well done. Yeah, this happened in Richmond County. I'm not sure where, uh, but yeah, uh, let me let me dig into this a little bit because uh, Richmond County dispatchers confirmed a call of an accident with injuries involving a train. Uh, officials later confirmed that a train had derailed in the incident, but uh, it was a NS locomotive striking a CSX train derailing 17 intermodal cars. They were double stacked, so 34 containers, it points out. Um, No injuries to the CSX crew. Uh, NS crew did seek medical attention. No hazardous materials, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, good old-fashioned... Well, not exactly a cornfield meet, because it was a rear-end collision, but, you know. Uh, Union Pacific had their first derailment of the period the following day on February 25th. At the Ogden Rail Yard, uh, O'Gillies pointed out that this was like the second in a very short period. And man, that is a hell of a wreck for a rail yard. Um, seven cars derailed and one is like almost up on end. Uh, yeah. Not gonna go, yeah. Oh. Speed, I'm gonna highball. Yeah. Oh no. Uh, all the way to the. All the way to the bank. TBA, your friend who's learning Derail Valley, send this to them and tell them to slow down in yards. Uh, (laughs) Because apparently I was told that he's breaking breaking the windows in his shunters. Uh, We also have a video of a Union Pacific train slicing a truck in two. Which is pretty great. This one with the eggs. Eggs? Yeah. I hope it's the eggs. (laughs) <laughs> what, I hope you, Grimbo gets eggs? the eggs. It might not have been this week. I saw a picture somewhere yesterday uh, of a UP freight that had gone through a semi, and the semi had been carrying eggs. Oh, no. And so the entire locomotive was just like... It, it was the color of scrambled eggs. It was sort of a whitish yellow all over. I was like, what the hell happened? <laughs> That's amazing. How <laughs> It struck a truckload of eggs. How to egg a train. Yeah. Pro <laughs> edition. Professional egging. EP egg train. I like somebody... No, not Kinder Surprise Egg. The top comment <laughs> here is <laughs> the one dislike is from the truck. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, I suppose it would be, though. But anyway, um, let's see. Then we get into March. On March 1st, Norfolk, Norfolk Southern hit and killed a woman who was walking on the tracks. I don't know if that was a suicide or what, but generally don't walk on the tracks. Uh, her direction was away from the incoming train. So apparently... I, I assume she just wasn't paying attention. I just don't know how you are suddenly beset like upon by a train like it shouldn't it shouldn't be surprising to you trains are loud also don't walk on train tracks um then uh BNSF had a derailment two derailments on March 3rd as a matter of fact oh one of them wasn't a derailment ooh uh one was a pretty spectacular pile up in the desert about 40 rail cars crashing into the sand or so they say uh, no one was hurt, no fire, not really sure what happened. Uh, there was a leak of ethanol, but, uh, that was quickly mitigated. <clears throat> and, uh, the other one is actually kind of sad and 
gruesome because there was an employee crushed to death between two trains. Dude, the picture of this derailment is brutal. Like, it's... It's it's like those old MSTS derailments. Oh, of the of the other one, yeah, yeah. yeah it's it's all over the place. Me, uh, you leave the track and then physics, physics happens. Physics. Happens. physics happens. It's always yeah. the physics. Too much physics. Okay, so it's the physics uh, that gets also, you. What? Also, what? Uh. Hello. Hello. Okay. Yeah. Hello, Dark Knight. What happened? Every, everything stopped. What happened? I don't, you said also, and then I said also what? And then nobody said anything. Oh. Uh, I told my friend. Oh, good. Good. I'm, go, I'm glad the message got along. Uh, but yeah, so that's the class of natural responsibility. Unsurprisingly, KCS is still holding it. Remember, if you have a derailment for the class of natural responsibility, particularly if it's KCS, Please send it in our Discord, which you can access in the cargoes of this podcast. So, He's there's watching that. This podcast, by the way. Hmm? He's going to watch this podcast, by the way. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> you don't have to do Tell him he doesn't have to do go that. Go slow in yards. Yeah. There you go. Uh, anyway. So that ties it up for the Class 1 Mental Responsibility on our Speedrun podcast. As for Track Said Tales, uh... I've got nothing. I haven't, like, played train-related games, but I sure would like to, because, why bold, you made me want to play Rora Tycoon again. <laughs> it's good. It's fun. We've been doing it uh, competitively with a couple of railroad friends that we've... Actually, I don't think we've ever played video games together, and that was that was a good experience, so I think that might become a regular thing. I am woefully bad at the game, <laughs> so I need to improve those skills a little bit. Or actually, you know, develop skills in the first place. Railroad Tycoon 3? Yeah. yeah. Ooh, I got this. Let's get in on it. It's a good one. I didn't realize it was as old as it is. It was released in 2003. I, it's ridiculous. It's a whopping yeah. 1.4 gigabytes. <laughs> and that's huge for it's a game of its era. Game. Oh, for 2003, it was enormous. But now an enormous game is pushing 200 gigs. Yeah. Yeah. Looks at GTA. Mm-hmm. GTA is only. I think GTA is only close to a hundred. Only. It's. Oh, but GTA is also eight years old, seven years old at this point. That's true. No, it's no longer really a modern game. Either way, there's that. Uh, the museum's been fun. We've got a triple header event planned in May. I think it's May. So wow. we've been just going gangbusters to try and get all three engines up to scratch. 20 is done, 20 is ready, 346 is done and ready. We steamed and ran it on the uh, the weekend train yesterday, and she tried to kill me. <laughs> Unsurprisingly. Um, and then 91, we have to, uh, we still have to put back together. It's got the smoke box face off, the cyclone's completely out of the front end, the superheaters need to be replaced, yada, yada, yada. She, she needs a lot oh. of work. Hmm. Yeah, 346, yeah. I forgot that. So... 346 is just a lovely engine. She's great to run. She's super responsive. She's, you know, all these things. Um, and the Johnson bar, you can move with one hand. She's our only engine that has that light of a throw. However, you've got to be careful because you can throw it with one hand when you're stopped. When you're moving, her slide valves are not um, adjusted quite right. They're not balanced. So the steam pressure will actually grab the slide valves while it's running and try and jerk the Johnson bar around. So if you release the clasp while the engine is running, it can move the Johnson bar on its own. So yesterday, oh. we're, we're bombing along. We're going up the hill on the last run of the day, and I hit the hill, and I have the bar a little bit too high, and I can hear her kind of struggling. It's like, oh, she wants the bar dropped by one. The other two engines, you can just very quickly click the clasp, and it'll pull the bar forward slowly enough that it just drops by one notch and then re-engages and the engine will be happy again. I forgot that I was on 346. Released the clasp on the Johnson bar. She threw the Johnson bar into the corner with my arm still connected and tried to throw <laughs> me through the front door of the fucking cab. <laughs> there's, there's video of this on Facebook. I don't think I can share it. And, and you can't see the locomotive, but you see the train go by. And, you know, <laughs> as I catch it and I'm like trying to 
re-put my arm in its socket and also keep Ow. the train from stalling. It's like, <laughs> damn it, you! I forgot that you do that! Ow! <laughs> and the fire... Meanwhile, the fireman's just looking over the top of the boiler at me like, what the fuck? <laughs> just half, it, you know, it's the last run of the day. He's got the fire light and kind of ready to go to bed. And half of it just went out the stack. <laughs> <laughs> like, that, was, that was bright that was bright he probably looked at you like you dick <laughs> god oh, no. so that was that was great that's pretty much all I have oh and also <laughs> for fun little tidbits that might happen a um, oh. couple years ago I think I talked about it we got some equipment from the Pikes Peak Cog Railroad because mm-hmm. they're redoing their rack and a bunch of their old equipment was no longer compatible we have talked lately about what we want to do for a display. We have three pieces. We have a steam engine, one of the old diesel rail cars, and one of the slightly newer diesel rail cars. Long story short, we're thinking about making two of them static displays and then having one actually be able to run up and down a short little piece of rack railroad, oh. which would make us the fourth rack railroad in the U.S. <laughs> <laughs> Behind the cog, Pikes Peak, and what is the other one? Oh gosh, I, can't, I think it's in Michigan. I didn't know it existed yesterday. Hang on. I this Rackers gets me every time because I, I'm like, where in Michigan is there a place to put a rack railroad? I know it's. Um, no list of rack railways. United States. The third one is the Quincy and Torch Lake Cog Railway in okay. Hancock, Michigan. Uh, oh, it is half mile long. Amazing. So it's it's really not much of anything. Uh, that's one sixth of a Mount Washington cut. But, but potentially in the next year or so, the uh, the Colorado Railroad Museum will become the fourth cog railroad in the United States. <laughs> I like how I like how the the dreams of things to do at the CRM uh, dual gauge the loop, build a cog railway. Uh, <laughs> Hey man, and cross would, the ditch. Th- doing the doing the cog would actually require dual gauging a little bit more of the loop. Oh, God, <clears throat> <laughs> gets a little bit longer. Okay, the the real question is, how do you do a dual gauge if your gauges are four foot eight and a half and four foot eight? <laughs> no, they're four foot eight and a half. No, I know. I'm I'm positing for, uh, the, for the other Washington. cog railway. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There, there are only the two, really. Someday on a Michigan trip, we'll go see this third cog railway and be like, "Wow, that's pointless, that's lame." Uh, yeah. what, what would be what would be really fun um, that I don't think is going to happen, but it's theoretically possible. The cog, the Pikes Peak cog, has indicated that they might not actually convert their steam engine that they have operable mm-hmm. for the new rack. <laughs> Um, in which case, Steal it. they might be they might donate it to the museum. In which case, we might have an operable cog steam locomotive. Yeah, well, not just that. The only operable Vuk Lane. Exactly. We would have. God, would that be the only operating Vuk Lane in the U.S.? Yeah. Wow. That would about the world. It, I'm not sure about the world, but I know for the U.S., it's the only one with a boiler certificate still. Well, I think it's actually intense. out of certificate pretty soon. But either way, yeah. yeah. All right, who else wants to jump on? TJ, I noticed you posted all these pictures of your uh, of your route, which sort of got me thinking. I, I told yes. TBA this earlier because I was like, oh, I, I was looking at something, and it was your route, and I was like, man, I really want to get back to fiddling with AI in trains. But look, yeah, talk to me about uh, talk to me about what you're building. Yeah, so this is. Um... Uh, a, few, a while ago, I talked about the uh, like the seaside route that I've been working on. So this is uh, the the shore end. Like this is coming into the shore now. Um, that I'm working on now. So it's uh, where the track becomes a double track. Uh, it's right after the swing bridge. You can see the in the last picture I sent the where all these where like the suburbs are developing. The track becomes double track again. Uh, um, here's that picture and uh, the mill is the newest thing I've added um, I, 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 it turned out pretty good um, the 
the retaining wall looks pretty good. I I I, I don't know the the texturing or the the way the spline system works in this game's a little weird. So, hmm. um, like the part where the wall curves is a little sus looking, but does that swing bridge move? Yeah, it does. It moves. Um, Epic. It's a little glitchy. It like doesn't swing until you're like on the trestle, hmm. and also the so this it, it didn't come like this. I like kit bashed this. So the swing bridge is just the swing bridge, right? And then the rest is like a just like a regular trestle spline. Mm-hmm. So like if you look close, there's like embankments huh. or uh, abutments built mm-hmm. into the bridge here. But you know it's fine. And, it's fine. Um, it's fine. Um, also, if you look at that, if you look at the picture facing the the end of the map, uh, and facing the town with like the power plant for the mill in frame. Which one is that? Uh, it's the second the one last overlooking picture. the lake. Second to last with the... Okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. The scaffolding work, uh, I'm really happy with. I, I did that myself. Oh, wow, that's really cool. Oh, yeah. shit. That yeah. adds a lot. Like the t- yeah, I added the tarp on the top, too, which is pretty cool. The only thing that is unfortunate about the tarp is that N3V... So the tarp is built in, mm-hmm. uh, and... The N3V didn't think that anybody would want to see the underside of the tarp. Oh, no. Ah. So there's nothing underneath. It's just, like, <clears throat> transparent. So it kind of ruins, like, the photogen, the, the photogenesis, genesis, I guess? I don't know. The photogenicness of the, um, of the tarp. So, like, mm-hmm. Is that really yeah, what it is? Photogen- <laughs> I don't believe. I don't know, but it sounds <laughs> right. It sounds right. It sounds like a word. Um, the photogeneity of the tarp or of that scene is greatly reduced. Yes, it is. The tarp doesn't have the tarp doesn't <laughs> have an underside. So, and three V, if you're listening, please add an underside to the tarp. Uh, I'll just shout at Zach later. Yeah, photogeneity is the state or characteristic of being photogenic. Oh, okay. Yes, that is there the word. Go. Thank you. Look at you, big brain people! I just wanted to say this um, wasn't this wasn't the only asset you had this issue with too, because uh, the sign on top oh, of yeah, the mill sign. you can only see from one side. Yeah, yeah, the sign. So uh, wow. none of the none of the pictures show you the other side of the mill, um, but you can tell that there's not a sign on the other side of the mill from this, the shots that are there. And then if you go on the other side, it looks the same. It looks Man, like you just gotta a... put another sign like back to back with it. Yeah, but then then the lettering it, wouldn't line up. Then the lettering wouldn't line up. Yeah, if there was a separate asset to like, if it was like front back assets that you could combine, then it would make sense. But there isn't. So front back. Shirt. I wish there was, because it, it like it looks good. It does. Look Silence good. you. <laughs> I want one. I want a front um, back shirt. Uh, but uh, if I can give you a tip on the retaining walls, just break the splines where um, where you're making adjustments or making curves or edges. You know, just do mm-hmm. two mm-hmm. two independent straight splines. Yeah, because you can remember you can like click the split spline thing and it'll just turn it into uh, a straight straight segment. There's yeah, actually yeah. it's like a. If you look at the the structure of the wall, I don't know if there's any shots that actually show it, but it the uh, the spot where the text strings messed up is like a curve in the wall. Mm. Oh, I see. Yeah. Um, hold on, I'll find a. I have a screenshot here. Um, right well, above. That is neat. I'm glad that this is. I, I'm glad that people still build stuff. You know, uh, I wish I yeah. I wish I could do it more. Uh. But hopefully, I get my car back. Go get my car. Go get my computer parts. Get back to making things like under construction, and uh, the Gosh, modular. Dude, I haven't built a route in ages. Well, Tyler's building a route. Like I built something in <laughs> yeah. MPS, but then stopped. Yeah. I hop onto MPS about. Once in a in a couple <laughs> once every couple of weeks and add like two more buildings to Charlotte and that's it, but <laughs> but yeah, Tyler, what is this that you've got going on here? Okay, so 
I, I decided to... <clears throat> many of you know um, Danos of Transforge. Danos Back Snap? a while ago. Yes, Danos Snap. He is inevitable? He, he is very much inevitable. Well, he made a lot of Yosemite Valley equipment. And I'm like, well, hmm, this would be fun. And so I decided to challenge myself a bit. And many of you might know that there is a Yosemite Valley route on the DLS right now. Mm -hmm. It was made for Tain. Um, somehow this person did all of the train work by himself, no dem. Holy crap. And so I took it in this one scene. This is Bridge 29A. Mm -hmm. went, okay, let's, let's upgrade it a bit. So almost all the uh, scenery here you see has been completely redone. Like the cat? Yes, I added in the cat, Not all of that. Yes, cats are great. I almost pulled up the, the Tucson cat cam for today's episode. <laughs> if, if Valheim wasn't yeah. working, I was already typing it in. Uh, <laughs> but anyhow, so this, you know, I, I was doing this and I posted it in the Transforge server. Mm -hmm. And Dan and then Curtis of Curse and Car Shops were both jumped on and were like, hey, why don't we just do the whole route? <laughs> and then the rabbit hole grows. Uh-oh. Uh and Scope Dan freak. makes the, let's see here, he's got the new speed limit signs and the station signs, which are on Transforge now, as well as the Merced Tower number two. You've seen the third photo there. That actually has a working clock inside. Now. Oh, Again, wow. scope creep. Oh, right. Yeah, you, you were showing that off, weren't you? Yeah. This is... It's incredibly cool. These are my people. <laughs> Tiny little details. And then, besides that, of course, we have um, the, the state-mandated update on cookie. Yes. I see three cookies. Yes. We Which have is great because I have two boxes of uh, Girl Scout cookies right here. <laughs> From order top to bottom, we have the UP Denver and Golf equipment. Okay, so that's um, this one the, with the sunflower stack. Yeah, the, the I consider this to be the fictionalized stuff because it's not. None of this was combined exactly as you see. Particularly the rear light. Yeah, I, I know we have a photo of... Some of them did the, have rear lights. I don't think any of the cookies did, but I know some UPDNG stuff did. Absolutely. And then, of course, you have the as-built Denver South Park and Pacific. <laughs> so if you want to, for whatever reason, run 113, use the UPDNG. Yeah, so it does... That's just going to be trying to get that done up um, next two weeks or so. Send it off to Kume. That'll be going into American Railroads, Sun River, and Pine Valley, of course. Which next update, we're getting multiplayer and ridiculous bunch of rolling stuff. Excuse stocks. me, what? Oh, is it? Is multiplayer going to be this update? I'm pretty sure. Shut yeah, up and take my money. System. Yo, what is it doing <laughs> bro? What Originally, it was the next update was going to be um, moved to the Unreal Engine. Yeah, but then QMA already got all the multiplayer stuff set up in the Unreal Engine. Well, well, there we go. So, how many players? Let's fucking go! <laughs> we have no idea. Hey guys, it's time. QMA lives in Germany. Listen, it's so to go get the Levisrom. Listen. How many? If the if the answer to how many players will this handle is we don't know. I think just we like MPS, we have an obligation it. to break it. Yeah, <laughs> the history. You've got a Let's one hell this. of a group ready to test it. Dude. <laughs> Let's do this. Uh, besides that, um, which actually Let's after this, this, I've got a was it it's a DNRG? I think sixty foot gallows turntable. I gotta make, and then that should be all of my contributions for this update. Um, we're looking Yo, um, at adding... American River should team up. 
Yeah. What? Uh, we just have steal some of their uh, devs. Yes. Yeah. Do they have plans to add VR into American Railroads? We've discussed it in the past. Because um, I know the Unreal Engine is pretty... It supports it. It's, yeah. yeah. Support it's it. just, it's, it's not something that we've really delved into. Yeah. I think at a later date, we'll, we'll table it's it. It's possible, but the priority is low. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I get what you're saying. Um, the, the priority more is we still have to set up a company system industry um we're kind of trying to pull off you know if Looks as we're taking three yes exactly <laughs> stonks we're, we're basically we're basically taking the playbook from rare tycoon free and just going what worked well let's join it let me yeah, let me but take they, out they might they might come and you know be mad at you because you're stealing their system from 18 years ago yeah, hold on god uh, Guys, don't worry. I've got the I've got the industry spread out right here. <laughs> okay. There you go. Oh crap! It's ripping. It's a little old. Good job. <laughs> uh, yeah. Besides that, I've I've got a three D printer now. So, woo! Printer go ver. Yo, three D print me some stuff. Three print <laughs> oh, me some great. Volvo parts, please. <laughs> <laughs> They'll just no, 3D print 3D. you another Tony. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> piece by piece. You just Tony, I need a sample of, of your hair. <laughs> Why? All right. Anyway, all right. So this is this speedrun podcast has encouraged me to like look forward towards like a new paradigm of what the Terminus podcast can become. So, uh, and and we can we can discuss uh -oh. this more after uh -oh. the show. <laughs> no, don't don't not owe it, but. We can discuss this a little bit more, but, uh, you know, I kind of want to uh, block out times for, for these sorts of things. But is there anything that, um, anything else that uh, we should cover that everyone has been doing these past couple weeks? Uh, uh, that's not it. Ow. All right. Good job, Careful. Sorry. Don't hurt yourself. That's fine. Uh, it's my pineapple letter <laughs> opener. Uh, of course it is. <laughs> oh, I haven't showed that off yet. Uh, all right, so uh, in that case, it's time to go move on to just about on time. Tyler, you said we would get yeah, back to you. A... Yeah, I was thinking cookie. Okay. Or or I, I kind of want to bring back the Red Devil, but not really. <laughs> We Red Devil is Devil already really cool, it. but it's really small. Yeah, it, it had its time to shine, so... I mean, it demolished the AA-20, didn't it? Well, yeah, but that's the AA-20. It's the least practical thing that has ever been built. <laughs> How dare you well, go to Gulag? <laughs> it's practical that it's a rolling Gulag. Yeah. It's we a curved had... straightener. <laughs> yes. We have not had a Weibold locomotive versus in quite some time. We haven't had a Weibold on the Disney. podcast. I was on, what, two weeks ago? No. No. Yeah. No. no. Yeah. No. Hang on. No. Hang on. <laughs> two, not two weeks ago, two podcasts ago. Were you? <laughs> no. Hang on. I don't, I don't think you were. I was not on that one. Um, apparently I wasn't on that one. Okay, I stand corrected. Yeah, it's been a while, <laughs> man. <laughs> I've been on the last, like, Four or five, and you haven't been there for either one of them. I was on 150, apparently. Okay. <laughs> so, three months ago. Last year. <laughs> well, <laughs> I uh, corrected then. Uh, Alright, but anyway, so, Tyler, what, what do you want to do? Or we could just grab one of these things, if you, if you haven't settled on anything. Unless if somebody has a good thing to throw up against Cookie, then uh, well, I'll, I'll let you cookie? choose from the... Oh, what's a good thing that we throw against the cookie? What is cookie? Cookie, cookie is... is... It's a DSPNP mogul. You remember the little blue mogul that I had on the Geiger Mountain series? Oh, let's do, um, <laughs> let's do one of the SRNRL uh, prairies DSP versus mogul. cookie. It would, no, it would... Oh, no, that would be a bad idea. <laughs> Massacre. <laughs> yeah. 18 versus, uh, or four, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. my gosh, it's cute. It's so cute. It's um, the cutest thing let's ever. Let's see. Uh... It's my son. Ooh, I feel like... 
Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking. My you think it? Burning. Uh, think. You guys smell burning? Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Cookie. Uh, Yo, oh. what if we did this versus <laughs> California Western 45? <laughs> Wait a minute. No. This thing is no. narrow gauge. <laughs> Uh, 45 was garbage, though. You know what would actually be kind of funny? You know what would be kind of funny that I would love to see? Uh, speaking of narrow gauge versus standard gauge, Cookie versus an S100. Oh! Down. I'm down. Let's do it. Uh, GR10. Could be interesting. If you guys think that would be a massacre, let me know, but it's kind of a, it's a matchup. I'm interested. Alright. I'm gonna have to play smart. (laughs) Yeah. Uh... All right, I'll write it down here. We gotta get our steam locomotive pages. I need steam locomotive. I I already know TBA is gonna be all in for Granite Rock Ten. You uh, bet your sweet ass I am. <laughs> okay, link the page. Oh, insert. Oh, the information you're about. To... All right, I don't know. There you go. Thank you. Types. Then you want it back. Yep, white, right? Uh, it doesn't actually matter. Nah. Uh, formatting. Formatting. Well, sometimes it's tough to know if there's a link there when it's still white. Uh, mm-hmm. But yeah, so so while he grabs that, uh, my my thoughts in general are like, we we could move the podcast to a more consolidated and more uh, I guess host and co-host driven format, you know, and, and we probably I should would very because, much enjoy that because because let's be honest, all the news we're talking about, people already heard it. Uh, Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, okay, say for every once in a while, but if we can, you know, sort of bounce off each other and, and just focus on the things that we want to talk with each other about. Then that's a uh, that's a different story than well that's that's, that's kind of what I was thinking like with the discussion topic thing yeah like we it's it's more of like bouncing back and forth ideas about the news rather than just reading thirty news stories that people have already heard yeah I mean exceptions mm-hmm. exceptions granted for like you know places that you volunteer at or are nearby you know you yeah, want to share or, your or information like, about but. Hey. Or like, you know, like right. silly places like the like the cat like the cat is fine like well, yeah the cat is fine. <laughs> Special special yes. permission given to the cat, the stubborn cat. Uh, All the cats. Okay, calm down. Uh, cat column. Uh, invented felines. I was yes. doing emperor, not Gollum, but you know some difference. Does, does this uh, link work for? Um, I think so. This sounds. This seems right. Yes. I mean African theater, so, but. Close enough. Like, I mean, I can't find Granite Rock 10 herself. That's fine. This is probably near enough what we've used in the past, so I, I put it in for you. Uh, oops. Okay, so now, now go get a feed me your pictures, there. although I suppose... Oh, okay, Tyler's going to send in this guy. Uh, CNS number 8. Uh, yes. One cute boy. That one is actually 113. Rebuilt. 113 shows up in my list of uh, of verses I want to do, because just like every other Pacific that comes along and I get frustrated at, I just put it up against 3713. Uh, we've, we've already gone over this. It's going to get slaughtered. You know what? I don't care. 3713. Uh... I mean, Why? and this Why will definitely like be if, if Weibull is around for it. Weibull, don't look at this one. Uh oh. I was annoyed at the P44. I can't remember why, but. <laughs> <laughs> You're annoyed with the P44 because it's the genesis of the Yampa Valley. I mean, yeah, that's probably. That's, that's you know. That's viable. It that's... is the Yampa Valley engine. <laughs> Yeah, but I liked the Yappa Valley Mail before they got the end cars. <laughs> More or less. Did, did somebody say end cars? No, we didn't. Go to Gulag. Uh, 
I like how Agile is just sitting by himself in Horseman A. What a loner! Poor guy. Poor guy. He knows we're okay, here. Uh, yeah, he's watching. He's just waiting. Shia LaBeouf. Uh, <laughs> okay, anyway, alright. Grand Rock 10 versus the Cookie. I. Oh man, I don't really know here. I know the Cookie's probably going to be fighting an uphill battle, but Tyler knows this game way too well. Uh, <coughs> so, I, I think I'm going to. Let me remind you who beat 113 with this thing. <laughs> I mean, that is true, but I, there's an order of magnitude difference. I don't know. We'll I see, if, like, we'll see if you can like do it. Cookie, cookie is probably lighter than this, actually. We'll find out. Go ahead. You, you've got first. You've got the ball first. I get to go first? Yeah, I'll say you get to go first, unless I'm getting objections from the other co-hosts. What's your driver diameter? <laughs> That's a good place to start. Oh, low, good low, place to 40. start. <laughs> <laughs> you said 40? Sets the tone. You said 40? 4-0. Four, 4-0. Zero. Four, zero. And this is in inches, not millimeters. <laughs> 54 inches. Allegedly. I like a wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. I need to check something real quick. It's just before we go uh -oh. on, I know I'm I know I'm putting the, the brakes in the podcast the to see something really stupid, but I, I need oh, to no. know. I need to know. Uh, all right. I go over here, in here, Pennsylvania. Uh, and there you are. Okay, no, they are they are bigger. I remembered something having, like, 56-inch drivers. Uh, and I was like, oh, my God. But, no, I, I was mistaken. Never mind. Carry on. Uh Okay, so my driver diameter is 54 yep. inches. Uh, let's see here. These engines. Tyler, what is your... What's your tractive effort? 16,352. Oh. 21,700. Uh-oh. 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 <laughs> He can do it, but it's going to be tough. <laughs> TBA's going to have to make a misstep. Mm hmm. It's like when you're dogfighting with somebody waiting for them to make a mistake. Yep. <laughs> Alright, Tyler. What is your boiler pressure? 190 PSI. 211 PSI. Yeah, that explains a lot. Metric. Um, okay. What's your high pressure cylinders, diameter times stroke? Oh boy. 15 by 18. 16.5 by 24. Goodness. What is. So perhaps this wasn't the brightest yeah. idea. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna. I was just thinking I should have picked a smaller S X O. What is your engine wheelbase? Engine wheelbase sixteen feet. Ten. <laughs> Crap. What's your driving wheelbase? <laughs> you activated my trap card. Ten. Ten. <laughs> okay. So now. All right, and now it's Cookie's turn. Uh, I just, right. just stayed away from just that. Just Evan Greta, uh, Cookie versus Baldwin six wheels. <laughs> you <Yes. laughs> Why? Why would you do that? Baldwin eight wheels or something. Just... Uh, do, 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 do. Cookie versus He's Attleboro. <laughs> Should have done that one. Why would you... Mm. Tender fuel capacity. Oh! Oh, 1.30. Six. Six. Six chords, right? <laughs> That's not fair. You have a tender. I don't. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> <Dug> it. <laughs> Standing on the tender, just uh, double middle fingers. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Take a swing. All right. Uh, I guess since I am the smaller one here, power MT. Ooh. 
Remember when I said Tyler knows this game? He knows. He knows. He understands mm-hmm. how things work. Power L one. Four thousand one hundred and seventy-five. Four thousand nine hundred sixty-three. Mm-hmm. What the fuck do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> tread lightly. Yeah, I really gotta tread lightly it's here. It's three to five. Tread lightly. Mm, wait a minute. Tread tread very lightly now, won't you? Factor of adhesion. Four point six four. Three point nine one. That's really good compared to Tread lightly. Yeah. Why well, Tyler knows. <laughs> yeah. I I just he... I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to assume, since you are about the same length, but you are thicker, weight on drivers. 100,650 pounds. 64,000. Oh my god, you're Doban so much Chonkero. lighter. <laughs> the Doban Chonkero. <laughs> uh, but that moves me into my next point of engine weight. Of should be the same number. <laughs> if, if, it's, if it's if it's not there, it's the same number. <laughs> it's the same number. Uh, this New- Newton right. says it's the same number. <laughs> Seventy four thousand. Okay. TBA, are you there? I didn't even hear the question. Oh, he said he said yeah. engine weight. Oh, uh, it's the same number one hundred. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm <being poor. laughs> hmm, and this this also brings me to another good point of axle loading. Oh. Uh, Do they have axle loading? I'm going I do. To assume it's probably one hundred thousand six hundred and fifty. No, no. If if ideally, gonna... it would be that over three, but it's probably not. Your rear axle is probably heavier. Because you can well, do wheelies. Because I, I don't have that. No, he, he doesn't have it. He doesn't have it. Try something else, Tyler. Can yep. I? No, I want to divide it. I want to divide it. <laughs> so, can we do the average? It's because average you see... axle loading. I mean, that's, that's the already... absolute minimum axle loading is going to be yeah. 33, whatever it is. Yeah. 650 divided by 3. 33,200 30, something. Yeah. Well, mine is 21,600. Okay. So. <laughs> well, TBA, I was trying to save you a point there. <laughs> Tread lightly. <laughs> You can stop saying it. <laughs> it's just it's the bike bugging Minimum me. Minimum weight of rail. Minimum weight of rail, okay. Do you need Penzi weight? No. 36 pounds is my weight of rail. 36. God. Uh, let's see here. I hate you. We already done that. We already done that. We already done that. Okay, we've already done all of geometry. Uh, what, what about your tubes? Oh, what about? Forget that that's a thing, and I'm not sure that diameter? was. Number diameter. Yes, number diameter. I have 150 of them, and they're two inches. 196 at two inches. Fuck off! What? How? <laughs> is the is the S100 superheated? I no. think so. Let me check. It's a war engine, but let me double check. It's a, it's really late to be a soak, but it was also built like by the dozen. So yeah, I, it's not showing. It doesn't no, show not. flues. So so what the fuck? I don't I don't know. They're just really spaced out in there. <laughs> just thousands of bees just buzzing around, lying around in there. All right, so it's now nine to five. My baby takes the morning train. What again? 
<laughs> mm. That also works. Evaporating heating surface divided by cylinder volume. Oh, this could be interesting. One hundred and actually, never mind. Seven point forty-seven. Two hundred fifty-five point seven one. I was gonna say he's so short on tubes. There's no way. Right. Mm -hmm. Ah. Actually, you bring up a good point. Since I'm already, I have a large amount more tubes. What's your evaporating heating surface? Uh oh. Eight hundred and seventy-six. Nine hundred forty-one. Ooh, was, this is close. Hey, Combined what... heating surface. <laughs> okay. Oh, you're flying close, Icarus. <laughs> 876. 941 still. So it is a soak. <laughs> 12 to 5. Okay. How many more points three, do I have to milk out before three, I can Three pull? more. Okay. What what do I feel comfortable with calling? Do I feel Well, you don't want that one. That one. That one, you don't want that one. Um, there is one that you might do well in. That has to do with the fact that you have a tender and he does not. That is That is fair, but... It's it'd be a close one, but it's possible. The other one is great. If you want to keep flying close, you can obviously do great area. I don't trust it because it's it's slit in between the frames. Yeah. So I'm going with I'm going with the first gamble of staying a little bit farther away from the sun. Tender water capacity. Oh. Twelve thousand. Okay, so your tanks aren't as fat as I thought they were. 16,000. Cool. Wait, what? Thousand or hundred 1, for both of you? Oh, wait, oh hundred. <laughs> yeah, hundred. One thousand two hundred. <laughs> I was say. Okay. I was gonna say. Twelve thousand. <laughs> Twelve thousand gallons is like... Oh, I don't know that the big boy has that much water capacity. I think that's as much as a coast-to-coast -coast tender has, or getting close to it. Hold on. UP big boy water capacity twenty five thousand yeah okay so it's it's about half of a big Alan, boy so tender that's a lot of water um, they're you actually, don't want that there actually is no point. boiler every single surface on this locomotive is hollowed out and filled with water uh, okay I'm going to time to consult my folio sheet. Okay. God. Let's see. I'll just pick <laughs> something. <laughs> I'm gonna go careful. <laughs> Look. I have to tread very carefully, Ellis. This is a thing. Uh huh. Oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> Hmm. Does does move in, but I do have length on my. Yeah, that might work. This is a big gamble. Firebox area. Oh boy. Length, length, help me here. Eighty six. Yes. A hundred point two. Oh my god. Well, that's because I'm an oil burner. This cab for the win. All right. That's because I'm an oil burner. Oh, you're, you can burn you're anything. An oil burner. It's also not how that works. Oil burning That's would it. affect your great area for one. Yeah, you do have you do have a coal fuel capacity, so. Uh. <laughs> I mean. Uh, uh, do I just need one more? Yeah, just do the last one and. Okay. Um... I I don't like this, but Robert Lamasinas. That's ba, a great ba. area, but okay. Okay, that's a choice. I, I don't trust great area. Ninety three. What? Robert Lamasinas power computation. Yeah. Four zero nine three. 
Okay, two, seven, nine. Uh oh. Uh oh. The reason I don't want to do great area is if you look on the models, the boiler, you know, it not the, boiler, the firebox goes in between the frames. Exactly, but you've got length. After yeah. you won, assuming he's got a higher, he's got a larger barrel, a larger diameter boiler barrel. So you assume mm -hmm. that his firebox is taller than yours. And because he had less overall square footage, even with the taller firebox, you assume you have a lot more grate area. He probably has very small grates. Mm -hmm. what is I don't your think so, because it's straight. Same, same as above, plus superhuman percentage. 2793. 4093. Uh, total engine and tender weight. I was hoping you'd never figure that one out. <laughs> 123, 250. 100,650. Oh. Um, number built. <sighs> Ten. Three hundred and fifty three. <laughs> there you go. I already know what you're gonna call next and it's ten. Number in class? Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> three hundred and fifty three. Uh, there it goes. War. Why? Why is this like this? When what year were you built? Nineteen hundred. <laughs> 1942. Yeah. I'm gonna call great area because I'm curious. Oh, wait, wait. All it's, right. We we push the judge's choice to the end. Everybody gets one. Oh. Okay. Okay. We'll don't find. worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there. No. <laughs> uh, I'm slowly mm -hmm. trying to reform versus and and Royale to make them slightly saner in some cases. Uh, we did that, did that. Impossible. Yeah. 11 to 14, TBA. Ratio of... Hey, hey. Uh-oh. Ratio of driving wheelbase to overall engine wheelbase. You're a tank engine, and I'm not. Do you want to <laughs> yeah, get Yeah, double middle wind? fingers, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Standing in the tender... Ta in, in the tender... Uh, not, the, not the tender. In the, in the no, bunker. I'm like... standing on the top of the tank with double middle fingers. <laughs> You're doing a split over the boiler. <laughs> <laughs> what is it, Tyler? What is it? Point six three. One. Hey, that reminds me of another oh. stat. You're out of ten. <laughs> okay. It's now twelve to fourteen. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um I'm like trying to Think of things. We've covered a lot of this already. Oh yeah, no, you I think we get uh, twenty six points under the belt collectively. There is one I can think of that I know I'm going to ask if it gets to judge's choice, but or, you know, if uh, if you guys don't ask it. Um, other than that, builder, what's your builder? Oh. I wonder. <laughs> builder is. It's all. Oh. We, we had this debate before, and apparently I am CNS built now. If, I'm, eh. built by, I'm built by many people, several. It's so I mean, I'll, I'll let you go with Cook, but it doesn't matter either way. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't even matter. <laughs> Try it so hard. <laughs> and you know. In the end, my son is getting bullied. <laughs> I like how two, uh, two S100s got converted to tender engines in Mexico. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. Why is it always the Mexicans? <laughs> Without fail. Somehow they got, they got 20 in Greece, but they didn't convert any of those. Probably because that was too expensive. Uh, also, the military early service was just like, haha, ha, no. No. Well, TBA, you got one more? If not... Uh, you can go to style points. <clears throat> I don't know what else no. you could ask at this point. I literally, I think we literally covered everything. Actually, I know one thing you could. Yeah, I know, I know, two I, know what I, I know a couple. <laughs> What's your local base ID? Oh, Jesus Christ, that wasn't what I was thinking. 
1,297. Oh my god. Give me that. Yeah. Give me that pity point. War engines. <laughs> Why oh do you exist? Alright, it's 1414. Uh, let's see. Can I ask the country? Because technically I've No, you cannot one. ask the country. That's no. a style point. <laughs> okay. Um. Ah, yes, Gage. Gage. <laughs> Two foot, it's what the people want. Gage? No. Standard, standard gauge. No. Three yeah. foot. No, okay, um, no. Uh, if not, we'll move to style points. No, nah, go to style points. Alright, well, or, want or rather... Great area. Yeah, judge's choice. What's your great area, guys? Okay, great area. Do, 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 do. 14.70. Are you kidding me? I could have asked this! 19.40. <laughs> Alright, you got I'm it. Worried about <laughs> on that the bottom. You killed me down there. All right, I have I have mine, which is, uh, I'll do it. It's a it's a slam dunk. Um, Ellis Tamelio's weight <laughs> computation. Nobody which, asked Valve Gear. Okay, sure. Yeah, nobody nobody asked that, but everybody gets one. So TJ would have to ask Valve Gear if uh, we want to yeah, ask, ask Valve. Valve Gear. Okay, so uh, I have Walters. <laughs> Stephenson. Yeah. So there's Stevenson. Yeah. And as for Ellis Amelia's weight computation, I know TBA is one, and uh, Tyler is not one. <laughs> Less than one. I, I assume it's like in the point sevens, but something like that. No idea. So uh, probably probably pretty good, but not as good as one. Are you kidding me? Yeah. I could have asked great area and one. Yeah. But I was worried about that because he kicked my ass down there. <laughs> yeah. It's very close. Well, it's seventeen to fourteen. Let's do um let's let's get some things out of the way. Obviously Grand Rock ten gets a style point for its military service. Uh I still run today. That's that's also true. Uh a cookie did run in preservation. A cookie did yes. did, did run in preservation. Uh it did. rest in peace. Uh the cookie gets a Don't point for, for doors. Which and all weather nice. cab. What? <laughs> Granite Rock 10 has an all weather cab. Does it? I yes. guess. It, I guess it does. I mean, you have more of an all weather cab than. than. than Cookie does. We covered this twice now before with Cookie. Uh, cookie gets half a point for its all weather cab, because it's not really an it's all weather cab. It's an all weather cab for one Absolutely person. It is. <laughs> Well, uh. <laughs> well, you can you can hold up the fireman. They just can't shovel. Also, the one that ran in preservation was an oil burner, so the fireman could just cower in the cab the whole time. That's fair. I'm not I'm not giving these I'm not giving these points out for, for the all weatherness. Fair. Uh, let's see. What else have we got? Uh, they're about equal in terms of air braking and pumping capacity. They both have had electronics fitted to them throughout the years. Sand is probably a push. Actually, no, because because Grand Arc Ten has two sand domes. Yeah, but they're smaller. Yeah, but well, I don't know because sense of scale they're... because it's a standard gate engine. Domes. Volume, though. I <sighs> two domes. Well, I I want to give him the point anyway. I'll give him a half a point because he's got more sand distribution, at least. He's got. Two lines on each side from each dome. Spark arresters. Okay, yeah, you Spark definitely arresters. have that. Uh, Do I at least uh, the get S1... a style point for being a tank? No. no, no, no. You're mechanically <laughs> lubricated, though. You can have a style point for that. Style point for World's Fair. Yeah, yeah. we've given that before. That's fair. You get, you get World's Fair. You yeah, <laughs> said else. fair. Huh? Fair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, does Granite Rock 10 have a backup light? Yes. Okay, just making sure. I'm sure some of them did at some point, if not. <laughs> and some of the cookies did, too. Yeah. Some of the cookies did. Um... I Some of the I cookies, think... I assume, eventually got knuckles on the front, because this picture does yes. not have one. Yes. <laughs> but... 
I added some photos of one they did actually have. Oh, okay. Granite Rock Tim has compressors on both sides. Is that a start point? No. Actually, if it has sure. compressors on both sides, then it has one more than. Yeah, that's true. If it has cookie. more compressors than Cookie. Yeah. This is true. Yeah. Dual everything. Cookie only has one. That's I've dual. got two. Cookie has white walls. Cookie does have white walls. Cookie, I mean, I'll be honest, Granite Rock Tan is neat, but Cookie is definitely look cooler over its existence. Also, Good. butterfly plow. Yeah. Plows. Yeah, give me give me Granite Rock Tan with a plow. <laughs> that would look cool. It's Hits a silly. snow drift and just turns perpendicular to the track. <laughs> <laughs> Hits a snow drift and leaves. Nope. What was that? There also, was some marker lights on the cookies, or class lights, rather. Yeah. I guess none of the Granite Rock 10s had. Really? Or none of the Granite Rock 10s. None of the S100s had <laughs> marker lights. They're all Granite Rock 10s. All, everything the light touches <laughs> is Granite Rock 10. No. Is that the weirdest. No. What is that? Is that the. No, it's not. Never mind. Never mind. Uh, what are you looking at? I was looking at the throttle linkage for Granite Rock 10, and it looks like it's being held by a bungee cord. I would not be shocked. <laughs> I think it is. It is. That is a bungee cord. <laughs> it, is, it is absolutely. That's not the uh, throttle linkage. That's for the sander, though. Oh, oh, sorry. I was looking at the wrong job. You're right. <laughs> that, that sand works by you You pull back on it, and it ha you, know, you go back and forth. But obviously, it's hard to push it forward when the linkage is so sloppy. So the bungee cord is like a return spring to pull it forward. Oh again. my god! Wait, where did the bungee? <laughs> the Rio Grande M68. Their Express Northerns actually had. They weren't bungee brand bungee cords, but they were effectively bungee cords on the whistle linkages because oh the whistles were up on the smoke boxes. Uh, <laughs> TBA. If I'm you, looking for said bungee cord. If you look at the it. front sand dome on Granite Rock 10 and zoom in, it like. It's bungeed around the sand linkage and off of the dynamo exhaust. Yeah. Oh my god, I see it. <laughs> <laughs> Style points for tactical hey, bungee cord. For you, okay. No. Uh, they I... both got shades. Oh, uh, the cookie has wing windows. Wing windows. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. What is that? The that little, wing they're the little windows that look at the picture of it um, in the Burlington paint. Oh, hold on. It's a little window that sticks out the side of the cab, so you can be leaning out the side, but you still have a small little window in front of you to help deflect the wind. Oh, I see that little thing, yeah. That was a western thing. Okay. Do you have comfy seats? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> no, almost certainly not. I'd be surprised Define if either of these had the... I don't think the S100s do either. Yeah. yeah. You can't heat a whole train with this. You can heat a coach. <laughs> the... The cookie has had a jump seat for a crewman. Head and brakeman. Oh, that's cool. I was also going to say, well, actually, that isn't a point just for the cookie, so never mind. Uh, I was going to say operating on the multiple fuels. Uh, I know we almost never touch on this, but can we give the S100 a point for having uh, not slide valves? I don't know what you call them. Piston uh, valves? Piston valves. Piston valves, yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. Mm -hmm. Piston Did valves are objectively better. For... Did we already give the S100 a style point for going around the world? I, I gave kind it a point for military, military service, service, but... Yeah. Hmm. Wait, you don't have pulling pockets. Uh, <laughs> he doesn't, but the photo of Granite Rock 10, it also has a steel pilot beam, which says to me that it was replaced at some point. Let me see if actual S100s had pulling pockets. No, because they had buffer beams. Never mind. <laughs> of course they didn't. <laughs> That's a point. This actually turned out to be a lot closer than I expected. This is actually a decent, decent fight. Yeah. Well, uh, what else? Unless we can think of anything that really jumps out at us. I assume nobody has like roller bearings. 
<laughs> yes, would the Colorado and Southern would fit these with roller bearings. What do you expect? <laughs> Yeah, Out of the Colorado and uh, Southern, I have I have learned to uh, never have expectations. Yeah. <laughs> the crooked and slow. Yep. Uh, crooked and slow forever. The S100s do have the steps in front, though. Uh, I'm pretty sure well, some of the cookies had switcher pot. They have that yeah, steps, they, don't they? Some of them did. Um, if you look in the photo of number eight, that was a later pilot. One was they they kind of shrunk it and then added in extra footboard steps for crew. Oh, okay, I see. This was the battle of our our children, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> I like how I like how it's got it doesn't have the two individual steps; it has one big step all the way across. It's a switcher board. It's a footboard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Big step. All right. Well, I'm I'm content to to call it there. I suppose it's a very very close win to the cookie. I'm good. Oops. Winner. Uh, cookie. By the points. Oh, I have no idea who I'm gonna vote for. Jesus. <laughs> and well, okay. Who are we voting for, Tyler. guys? I'm so torn. I'll vote Cookie. You know, I think I have to vote with you. I, I think I have to. I love Granite Rock 10, but I love Cookie more. I buy Robert Dollar Free. Uh, um, hmm. I like both. <laughs> They're both very uh, likable engines. Yeah. Um, I'll have to say I'll vote. Uh, I'll vote for the tank engine on this one. All right, vote for the S one. Get the give give the pity vote. Yeah. All right, so I've got about forty five minutes before I have to take off. Let's see what we can cover in the news or really discuss when it comes to some things. Although, let's get the little things out of the way. Um. Yep. Yeah. Tyler. Yes. Can you please put Granite Rock Ten in American Railroads? <laughs> I don't think that would work. We have to put standard gauge in first. <laughs> yeah, oh, right. I forgot it was. This is a valid I'm sorry, I forgot it was narrow gauge. <laughs> anyway, dual Everything gauge. Everything the light touches. I want to put Bailey Bridges in. Now I just feel like an idiot. Don't. You're, well, we're all dumb. I. Uh, I wanted to mention though, and this is the one piece of uh, T1 Trust news that I alluded to earlier. There's a picture of the backhead here, and uh, a man standing next to it. And it's a lot of backhead. I'm just going to say that much. <laughs> uh, the hole in the middle is where the coal goes in, it says. Uh, and once the firebox is complete, it'll be sent to St. Louis to meet up and be welded to the rest of the boiler. Oh my god. It's going to be so big. Gone, Huge. Gone are the days where they can take, you know, stuff on tour with them. They're just getting more and more and more locomotive. Which is, I mean, <laughs> you know, not a bad thing. It's a very good thing. Uh, meanwhile... will be nice. Meanwhile, New York City is getting more and more and more station. I just wanted to... This is the Empire Station plan. I'm not going to hold my breath. Uh, it could have as many as nine new tracks, and it could look a hell of a lot nicer. But the example still shows Madison Square Garden sitting up there, which is not going to happen. Like, it can't happen. If you're going to make Penn Station better, you have to get that that thing out of there. Thing. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It uh, include up to nine additional tracks and five new platforms. The new tracks would primarily serve New Jersey train set, but would also free up capacity on existing tracks. Uh, hopefully it would be finished by 2038. Uh uh, yeah, okay. LIR's new East End Gateway entrance in 33rd Street. Uh, the rethink of Penn Station, New York City. A nonprofit planning group said the Empire Station Complex plan, with its bevy of super tall modern buildings, could come ex at the expense of the neighborhood's New York feel, while neglecting a key problem. Uh, <laughs> what is the New York feel of the neighborhood? I don't know, but hey, I'm walking here. <laughs> Yeah, there you yeah, go. It's, I'm gonna get 
I'm gonna get mugged while I also get taunted by a bum on the street. Like, great. Love the New York feel. <laughs> but, no, I just want to say, uh, this oh, guy Diego. actually knows what he's saying because he brings up the key problem, which is, uh, not addressing the main issue, which is that they have one of the biggest train stations in the world stuffed under Madison Square Garden. Uh, Thank you. Also, you know, uh, He's along. He's on this train of, uh, he's lobbying for the relocation of Madison Square Garden so that Penn can be restored to its original Beau Arts style architecture. Yes, yes, yes please, yes, do it. yes, please. Bring back OG Penn Station. Do it. You must. Yes, please. Do it. And while yes. we're bringing stuff back, bring back the daily Amtrak service, which they they uh, are. They should be. And this is another thing where I'm not going to hold my breath, although I will hold my breath a little bit more. Uh, but the COVID relief bill that is making its way through our government right now uh, hopefully will include this provision dubbed the... Uh, oh, so the le legislation is dubbed the American Rescue Plan. I, I misread that as the Amtrak Rescue Plan. Uh, <laughs> uh, we need one of those, though. But it's a provision authored by U.S. Senator John Tester of Montana, which is interesting considering we've had all that news out of the Big Sky Rail Authority in the last few months, uh, which would require the railroad to resume daily long-distance passenger service within 90 days. Now, I hope that this comes with the funding in order to do that, because if not, it's telling them to do something that they basically can't do. You know? Uh... You know, it, it's it, if you're telling Amtrak to reinstate service without giving them right. all the funding that they're asking for to reinstate service, they can't do anything. They're just going to sit there right. and look, look like idiots. Uh, right. You're setting them up for failure, which is probably a, uh, a pretense to doing more lousy things to them. Actually, that's a great way to jump into one of our other stories. Uh, one of the things that we actually should talk a little uh -oh. bit about. Right, TJ? Yeah. It's TJ yeah. Uh, there's a lot of talk about, you know. I don't, uh, I don't know if there's a lot of talk. No, I don't mean about this. I just mean about, like, what the future of Amtrak is. Uh, I think, I mean, at least in the community, it seems like people are really. Like, I don't think Amtrak really knows what it wants to be. Um, because, like, on one hand, they sort of market themselves as, like, this sleek, modern um, railway service. And on the other hand, they cut service and. You know, they uh, they hate themselves. They hate the yeah. fact that they are a railroad. Well, they yeah, keep putting like, people in positions that don't like trains. You right, know, yeah. you keep putting blind plebs in charge of everything. You wonder why this happens. So, this is one solution that someone has to make uh, Amtrak better. And this is the first time I'm looking at this map specifically. Make Amtrak so. Yeah. A company, Ameristar Rail, wants to privatize the rail system on the Northeast Corridor. The group doesn't want to replace Amtrak, but simply enhance it, they say. Under its proposal, which presented to the Del Delmarva Rail Passenger Association on Thursday, trains would operate on Amtrak's lines and stations, and passenger passengers would board Amtrak trains using Amtrak tickets. What would change is the experience on board, America Ameristar Rail claims. The group would arrange private financing to co convert the fleet of the fleet to compartment style trains and increase high speed trains while making it more affordable for families. I, 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 okay. I I like this map. I'll just say that much. But that's about where it ends in terms of things that I like. I mean, we've talked about splitting Amtrak apart before. And, you know, you take the Northeast Corridor and the corridor services, you know, the stuff that's profitable, and you sort of let them do their own thing, and then you try to work on the other part. But I think the conclusion that we drew a lot of the time was really all you're doing is just pulling the legs out from under the long distance trains by doing that. I mean, I don't know. If you say you did just that, you split it up into, okay, whether or not it's privatized or government owned, you, you okay, we have Amtrak Northeast Corridor, we have Amtrak um, Western, Amtrak Zephyr, Amtrak, all these different divisions. <laughs> I feel like you would be able to almost better fund the organization as a whole because you would know what you're expecting up front. If you're dealing with Amtrak Northeast Corridor, 
you're you know the funding is there but they're they're doing okay they're not as in desperate need of help as somewhere like amtrak chief division <laughs> amtrak chief division every time they walk in the door you know they're asking for money and you know why they're asking for money and you're just prepared for that another okay. thing that's interesting here the article says there would uh there would also be more direct routes and increased service uh ameristar rail says it can do all this while remaining unionized interesting that they put that in like that they specified they must have had pushback by the people that they're talking to yeah, that reads to me like a corporate thing that is yeah, like, history history that none of us are privy to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but another another interesting thing is right about or right below that is the map, and I am interested at, in this map that goes from Hartford to mm-hmm. Springfield as it does now, Birmingham, Cambridge, and into North Station, and then up to Brunswick. <laughs> what an interesting service! Like cool. <laughs> Bless you. But who needs that? Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it would be nice to have something that goes around. It you know? looks like so it looks like to me, well, it doesn't really go around. It go, I mean, I guess it goes from New York Penn to North Station to Brunswick. So, yeah. but, it, but what it looks like is bi-hourly service frequency routes. So it looks like that's going to be more of like a commuter thing from Springfield on. To see how it shows, it's weird that it like shifts. It goes from the blue to the red, which means that it's gonna change service, I guess. But I why mean, would you want to switch? Why would they want to want you to switch trains in Springfield? You know that doesn't. Well, I mean, sense. it could mean more like half of the trains are continuing on and half of them are terminating because right. it's hourly half versus them, bi-hourly. Oh, true, half true. of them go New York Penn to Springfield and back, and then the other, you know, they go New York Penn, Springfield, New York Penn, Brunswick, Brunswick New York yeah. Penn. I mean, and and I wouldn't be opposed to that. I mean, having I a connection between the Downeaster and the rest of the world that doesn't involve getting on the Orange Line would be a good thing. Yeah. But, yeah. you know... I'm I don't think to what... I'm sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, I don't think anyone is dissing this map as being not things that people want, you know? Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm confused a little bit as to what they're trying to get at with... First off, I think the um, the name of the article or the title of the article is radically misleading based on that little excerpt that TJ read. I feel like wanting to privatize Amtrak service on the Northeast Corridor implies Amtrak is not no longer yeah. a part of the picture. Yeah, it's that, private trains, private crews. Private. I, I feel like that's that's a pretty misleading title, but I don't understand what they're getting at with the excerpt you read of they want to change and privatize the onboard experience. Oh, okay. So I think this is so in so sim. I think it's probably similar to what um, something like Kaolis Rail Services does, mm-hmm. which is the company that like uh, operates the MBTA uh, train sets in, especially on the Fitchburg line. I know. I don't know how how widespread they are, but uh, oh, they're, they're they're over. I mean, they run all the MBTA. Stuff. Oh, they do. That's yeah. they do all of it. Okay. Yeah. Um, do they I, own I would, him? I guess no, they wouldn't so they, own MBTA. So they, they, don't, they don't own MBTA. They don't like. They don't run the trains specifically. I don't think. I think they just like are the conductors. Like they do all the like the the they do the on the train stuff. So like they, this is what. So they're they're basically um, fuck. What was the name of the organization? It is the it's the front range passenger people before they became the front range passenger people on the ski trains they're essentially docents even though the service is owned and operated by exactly amtrak. so like amtrak yeah. would be running the northeast corridor still but the the, the it, as soon as you get on the train ameristar would be taking care of you on amtrak i, I, think, I mean honestly cost aside i don't i don't see much of an issue with that no, i don't either i like the idea of nicer compartment service and more affordable tickets you know if, whether or not they can actually do this truthfully <laughs> is another matter but yeah if it in terms of the out, idea i'm kind of on board yeah, me too. No, it's it's definitely a something that I would like to see. I, I I'm interested if this will if if they don't if Amtrak chooses not to go the private route, I wonder if it will say like study if if, if they like in in thinking of the privatization route, they like study it and then they say, "Oh, well we could actually do this ourselves." That would be interesting. Like I want to see Amtrak compete with the privateer to provide better not, service. I don't think they're going to, but I think that would be really cool. 
I'm just not sure they could. No. Like there, I mean, if you and going back a little bit to the beginning of the conversation, if you divided it into Amtrak Northeast Corridor, Amtrak, all these different services, maybe you could because you're dealing with a very specific set of problems and your focus is much more refined. But Amtrak as a whole right now, the interior experience on the Northeast Corridor is probably very low on a oh, list of, of yeah. quote unquote problems. Yeah. Where you've also got, you know, the Southwest Chief is barely managing to keep running, and we've got bus service replacing half of it half the time. It's like, yeah, you, you, yeah they're not going to go around changing the compartment size of a of an Amtrak right. coach, like unless unless you were to break it up, and it's like, okay, now we can focus specifically on this. These are the problems related to this train or this corridor service well, that's with these. I, that's what trains. I wonder. I wonder this as well about Amtrak because I don't obviously I don't know how the internal structure works, but like right. I wonder if they do Poor, have like, poorly. Yeah, but well, other than that, <laughs> I wonder like I wonder if they have like, um, you know, the Northeast Department and the like the Northeast Corridor Department, the long term like the the service like the, the, cross, the transcon service. services. Yeah, That's the word yeah. I'm looking for. <laughs> yeah, like I wonder if they have something like that in place, or if they're just like we're Amtrak, we take care of everything all at once. Like I, I don't. Yeah. I, it, I, just to to clarify and and to sort of think back a little bit, the thing here is that they would be changing out. You know, they would be Amtrak trains, Amtrak lines, Amtrak tickets. But not Amtrak, you know, basically Ameristar would be coming in as a contractor to do all of the people stuff, you know? Yeah. And yeah. that's what Keyless does. I don't see no issue with that. Yeah. And I don't really see an issue with that either, except, well, if we do break it up, you know, if it were to be broken into Northeast Corridor, okay, America, Ameristar is doing this and they get to take the profits and do what they want with it. Uh, you know, whether that's infrastructure or, you know, upgrading the rooms, yada yada, uh, or line their pockets, who cares, uh, then, you know, you're taking that profit away from the rest of the network, and, Weibold, you're not wrong when you say that it would help sort of distill, uh, help sort of figure out how to fund the rest of the network, but that only works if people are committed to funding the rest of the network. You know, well, yeah, that's another thing. Well, too. I think we're talking about two different things here. On the one hand, there is Ameristar wanting to do the privatization of the interior experience as one issue, and then the other issue would potentially be breaking up Amtrak into smaller segments. I think either of these things could be done without the other. I, I don't necessarily think you're wrong. I just don't know how Ameristar would come into the picture without basically without being a middleman that ends well, up. The same taking uh, a portion of the profits, you know, and they want to do all this stuff. They want to build this maintenance center, they need to, they want to expand rail service and do this, that, and the other, and some of the senators, as they mentioned in the article, have mentioned that, or, you know, have talked about uh, basically, there's, there's no way that they're going to have the money to do the things that they want to do, and the yeah, costs yeah. that they're citing are inconceivably higher, low. You know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And the other thing is, you know, I feel like that's the grand old problem of these sort of projects though, is the people who, the privateers who come into this are like, Oh, well we could do it for blah, blah, blah price. And then, you know, the people who have been at Amtrak for years go, ha, ha, no, you can't. Um, I mean like the Boston surface railroad comes to mind on sure. um, this sort of like, Oh, well we can do this, 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 and then they actually get to doing it, and then it's like, well, we can't do most of this, so we'll just sit here now. Hmm. Well, I don't know. Either way, I don't think this is going to happen. <laughs> it's it's well, a neat thing to talk yeah, about. Here, but... Here's a good hypothetical. What? What if, in, instead of a Maristar Rail, which we don't know exactly their experience, what if we get the guys who did Brightline? I mean... Why don't I we mean, get they Virgin, seem to know how to Virgin run a railroad. Like, or we isn't could just Virgin hire... behind Brightline? No, Virgin, yeah, bought, someone buy it? Virgin, Virgin bought, bought them. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. But they weren't the ones that started Which is it. interesting, because... I, <laughs> Virgin, well, Virgin and Trains wanted... is a weird thing right now. 
Yeah. Well, they have a they have a train. They have trains in the in Europe though, don't they? Yeah, they, they had. Do. In, no, in the they UK. Had? had the uk yeah. stuff is no longer virgin i don't know if that it was <laughs> <laughs> congrats <laughs> yeah congrats on this. i don't know why but it was a big shake up god i think it was 2019 um like virgin uk is no longer a thing for weird. trains that's that's really weird it, it's bizarre it's like uh-oh uh oh, my 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 Discord just broke. Everything broke. Why did I do this? Okay. Vegas uh, thing, right? Yeah, that's Which the whole thing. sounds, from what I hear, kind of moving and shaking behind the scenes. Sounds like it's well underway. Which is interesting because, like, why would why would their why would their server like? Did they just they were they just like okay, uh, yeah, UK doesn't want us anymore. All right, let's go to the US. I, like what? <laughs> like why? Seems to be how it what? works. <laughs> we had a revolution about this. That's how we wound, <laughs> yeah. that's how we wound up with the Who, right? Yeah. yeah. And the Beatles. <laughs> uh, British invasion. Uh, all right. Well, let's let's uh, let's move on to something else. There are a few other Amtrak things to bang out. Like they uh, say they're going to have Gulf Coast service in by 2022, and also the town of Bryan, which I have no <laughs> idea where this is. Yeah. Uh, Finally, they're serving the town of Bryan. I've been waiting my entire Sorry. life. The Amtrak city of Bryan. Uh, uh, and they are going to maintain its train stop in the seat of Williams County. They're going to build an enclosed passenger station and a platform that's compliant with ADA. I still have no idea where this is. I don't know. The implication of this article is that Ohio. you can have a passenger station without it being covered and including a platform. <laughs> well, you can on Amtrak. Yeah. I I know, and I know that's the reality, and I hate that that's the reality. It's like, God, people, where did we go? Oh. Where did we go wrong? We I had mean, it so good. We did. Everything we had... was so good, and now it sucks. Like, Everything the thing is, so is like, good. the, the, and, you know. the work for the is, control. like... Yeah. The, the, the things that, like, a lot of the time, the things that they're rebuilding that are terrible are in place of things that were once great. I know. Oh, like, it's, 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 uh, like, we'll build an Amshack on the site of, like, this historic Union Station. Well, remember and... remember Grand Junction, Ellis? Yeah. Remember Grand Junction? There's this beautiful Art Deco stone and uh, glass arched window station right there with the baggage room and everything. It's, it's great. And the station is no longer used. There's an Amshack right next to it. And that is the Grand Junction station that sees that for service every day. It's uh, like, it's ah, you. Mm. Why? Jesus. Why do you do this to us? You fucking people. Ugh. Anyway, um, on the note of bankruptcy, doubling back to Virgin a little bit, <laughs> Iowa Pacific has been in hot water for quite a while. I think we've touched on that. Oh yeah. Uh, previously, they have just appointed a receiver for the actual company. And everything that was not for sale previously is now for sale. For all intents and purposes, the bankruptcy is now completely underway, and it is, it's is—it's over now. It's done. They're selling a dome car for a million dollars. Ugh. The, the prices, I don't know where they're getting those, but whatever. Hey, does anyone get, give me 20k so I can buy an E8? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, there are yeah. so many E units! There is so yeah, like why would I look through this whole list earlier? Did anyone else get the chance to look through this list? I did, no, I and know. I was really surprised with what's on there. <laughs> Where did you get it from? Uh, it's in the article. If you also oh, yeah, is it? It? yeah. Ke Kevon posted it in in Horseman like yesterday as well. Uh, I, Interesting. No, I, I they, they, they might have released it then. Yeah. So if you look, this is the thing that really caught me was. And that huge slew of EH you've got, number five one nine. I've been on that unit. Mm -hmm. There is no indication that that thing is owned by the Iowa Pacific, and it is probably now the best unit that Iowa Pacific owns because they haven't been able to turn the wheel tread into dust. Was owned uh, past tense. Oh, yeah, will yeah. not own. Well, we'll it see when they become a new company. <laughs> hey, when they buy it back. Oh, no. They, 
I would not be surprised to see them frag completely and all of their holdings become parts of Watco on the tracks, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Or just out on their own. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised to see. I wouldn't be surprised to see the Slurge die, frankly. I mean, is it really so alive? I mean, it's kind of, that's kind of why I say I wouldn't be surprised. It's been kind of alive for the past 10 years or so. They've been existing. So, I don't know. For, for the past um, two, they've not. Region. Yeah, no, the past two, they have not. Similar region to the Slurge, the Cats just announced their schedule. Um, pretty much the same thing, except you can now rent coaches to be COVID compliant, which I think is kind of a neat idea. That is a neat idea. Railroad like the Cats, where you've got small cars that you could feasibly fill with like a club or a you know a town or rotary a or something. You know or that, something. Yeah, it's like okay, that's that's feasible. That's a neat idea. I don't know if they're going to be like us. Yeah, I was they are going to be starting. Sir, yeah. They are going to be starting service out of Chama again, which is good. So they're banking they're not, on... They're not DNSing it? Yeah, well, they're bank. Last year, they didn't run out of Chama. They ran Ant Nido to Cumbres and back, because New Mexico was closed. <laughs> yeah. So they're banking on New Mexico relaxing a little bit this year, and they're, they've announced more um, Chama service. Every time they cross the border, they had to take everyone's temperature. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think they just kind of ignored that little part. <laughs> The fact that it like crosses the border twenty times or something between Ant Nido and Cumbres. Well, I mean, I guess as long as they only do it once. <laughs> um, they'll also have the roundup later this year with 168 running for the first time in revenue passenger service, which is just bizarre because it's been restored for so long now. <laughs> with you know, COVID kind of can it? It's like, oh yeah, I guess it hasn't pulled a revenue revenue passenger train yet. It's just been hanging um, out. Eureka, it Glenbrook, hopefully RGS twenty, etc., etc., etc. What do you say, TBA? They just think of running one sixty eight now. Well, they haven't had the chance to. Everything's been closed. They haven't yeah. been running revenue trains. They're, they restored it for service in fall of twenty nineteen, mm-hmm. if memory serves. And they're like, okay, yeah, its passenger debut will be over the summer of twenty twenty with the Victorian Roundup, and we'll do special <laughs> trains Whoa. and photo charges and yada yada. Yeah. <laughs> year and a half later, it's pulled plenty of trains. It's been out and back a ton of times, but it's never pulled a revenue passenger train. You've never been able to buy a ticket to ride behind it. <laughs> yeah, because COVID just crossed its arms and was like, ah, no. Ah, ah, ah. no. Get out of the tank. No. I don't feel no. like it. I'm literally no. in a tank and you're I'm not. I'm literally in a tank and you're not. Literally get out of the tank. <laughs> no. No. I'm in a tank and you're not. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Anyway, so uh, uh, Tyler has a couple I've of got little. Something good. Oh, what's that? BNSF is bouncing back from the harsh winter weather. Uh, yeah, first yeah. of all, I actually had no idea that BNSF suffered from the winter weather this year. I know it was so. bad, but I didn't know that it. I, <laughs> I didn't know they. I didn't know it affected them that badly. But it's good to hear that they're bouncing back. We're not losing any railroads this year. Keep on, keep on trucking. We're not losing well, any class. Anymore, uh, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. TBA, you're wrong. <laughs> We're not losing any class ones. But uh, say goodbye to Pan Am for the second time in our parents' lifetimes. Uh, oh, well. Rest C- in peace. C- yeah, CSX is acquiring Pan Am. This is another thing that I wanted to talk about. I've got maybe you know, another 20, 25 minutes or so uh, for the speed run show. But yeah, uh, I am not happy about this for some re- like some like decent reasons and a bunch of stupid reasons. But yeah, um, CSX Wait, is, is the is Pan Am the one that runs Woda? Uh, uh, no, that's that's P and W. Yeah, it's Providence of Worcester, and they're under uh-huh. the the G and W Orange Plague umbrella. Which is funny, because Pan Am is now going to be under the G&W Orange Plague umbrella. Uh, CSX Pardon. is purchasing... So they acquired another one. Well, yes, but actually no. CSX purchased Pan Am, or will be, I suppose, uh, in exchange for giving NS trackage rights on the Boston and Albany. And they aren't going to be running Pan Am 
partially, I think, because they don't connect to it much of anywhere. Uh, they are... A, a new G&W railroad is coming into existence called the Berkshire and Eastern, which will operate the former Boston and Maine west of Ayer. Uh, so the actually... The B and E? The breaking and entering? Yeah, the breaking and entering. Actually, that's interesting, <laughs> so I never really looked at the map here. So, west of... Uh, yeah, west of Ayer. A, a facility in Ayer, yeah. So basically, they're going to be running the section between the basically New York, Mechanicsville, and Ayer, and that's it. And everything else is going to, to CSX. CSX is going to be running all the stuff that runs up into Maine. Uh, wow, I realized that they're getting a relatively small portion. I guess if anybody, if, I guess if it was anybody other than CSX that had bought Pan Am, that section would be the most important. But seeing as CSX already has the other east-west route across Massachusetts, and thus the only other way into New England that isn't via Canada, it really doesn't matter to them. It's just a parallel line to them, so they can just give it to somebody and not care. Uh, that kind of sucks for the old B&M. But... I mean, at least I'm not tearing it up. I guess, yeah. It's, it's fewer trains through the Hoosick Tunnel. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, this is one of the things that I kind of wanted to talk about, but I suppose not a lot of people here have a ton of experience with this. Here's, here's the thing that gets me, though. So, I need to see... I would really like to see a map of the Berkshire and Eastern and how it connects to the New England Central, the Connecticut Southern, the Providence and Worcester... And I think any other holdings that they have in that area, because this is a fairly significant network now for G and W. Uh, yeah, they have like almost all of New England crisscrossed somehow. Yeah, it's going to look like a pretty intense map. I mean, I don't know how large Pan Am was in terms of mileage. I suppose we could always look that up, but I would love to know how large the G and W New England system is after this, and if it rivals. Uh, it's massive. It's, it's going to be really big. Uh, CSX will allow NS to run at least one intermodal... Uh, hey. What's up? Pan Am, which is based in North Bellarica, Massachusetts, owned, owned <laughs> and operated a nearly 1,200-mile rail network across New England. Okay, so 1,200 miles is not, not something to shake a stick at. I wonder how that compares to where... Uh, New England Central, G&W Connecticut Southern, be. yeah, where g will be. I also want to say this, uh, and this is kind of upsetting, uh, because it means that I won't get my late-night train chase out of the Hoosick Tunnel. Because NS is going to be getting trackage rights on the BNA. it's only for one train. It's just for 22K and 23K. So one train in Wait, each that's direction. Little, that's why they, oh, so the trains that we like the most are the only reason why, or <laughs> that they have another line now? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, no, it's it's cool. upsetting because we won't get the late night train out of the Hoosick Tunnel because that train is going to be running via the Boston and Albany so that they can run it double stack. Oh, okay. Because State Line that Tunnel sounds... is tall enough to fit double stacks and the Hoosick Tunnel is not. So, that said, now that both railroads have this sort of stake in, in um, both lines... If something were to happen to one or the other, it would be really easy to ship traffic. Uh, you know, remember last year when the Hoosick Tunnel suffered its collapse, and NS had to send trains up over, uh, like, the uh, old Rutland Railroad, the central Vermont, to avoid the Hoosick Tunnel. Now, if something happens to Hoosick or something happens to State Line, all the trains are just going to shift to the other line, probably in pretty short order. I wonder if this would even mean that uh, Lakeshore Limited might get moved in in the circumstance that something were to happen to that line there. I don't know. But Pan Am will cool. abandon its branch from Oakland to Madison, Maine, uh, which has been out of service for a number of years, but I don't know where that is. CSX also noted the ex- acquisition would give it access to the port of St. John in New Brunswick, which is the one that CP has been trying to get to. Uh, <laughs> so that's more interesting. I don't know, this, the whole New England rail landscape has really been sh- 
shaken up in the last two years or so, and it's it's kind of crazy, honestly. We got to see some things that uh, that I guess might never be seen again. But that's you got that. more orange. Yeah, say never. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if they do decide to shave another 15 inches off the roof of the Hoosick Tunnel to get double stacks through there, then maybe we'll see 22k return to the Boston and Maine. But that's a lot of shaving. Maybe someday. Maybe someday. When the tunnel when the tunnel collapses and they turn it into a cut, then that'll be possible. <laughs> yeah, right. That's Good that's cut. just. Well, it won't be a cut. They'll just build Madison's Cube Garden above it. Madison Cube Garden. <laughs> uh, In a bu- Massachusetts Garden. Yeah. Mass- Madison Cubed. Just the Mass Garden. The Mass Garden. <laughs> I want to throw this out there, though, uh, in terms of fights in Massachusetts. This is something smaller. We talked about the Grafton and Upton versus Hopedale, and they sort of made a... Ma- they made an agreement. The Grafton and Upton wanted to basically take some some forested land and industrialize it and the town didn't really like that idea and so they made a deal where Grafton and Upton got some of it and in, in exchange the town got to turn another portion of it into like protected land and there was another portion that Grafton and Upton got but wouldn't be able to develop for 10 years or something like that or 5 years I think and hmm. Uh, the town, the townspeople apparently were really unhappy with this deal because they're taking the uh, the Grafton and Upton to court, uh, and the town, I guess, to court to protect this land. Uh, the railroad said it would provide. So this was, it was a uh, 130 acre. Sorry, yeah, 130 acres of forest land and 25 acres of wetlands. The railroad wanted to build an industrial site. Uh, the property is next to the Hopedale Parklands, which is park. Uh, Hopedale filed no. a lawsuit as a primary injunction against the railroad, but later agreed to settle. Hopedale will get 85 acres of land plus a 20-acre expansion of the parklands. In turn, the railroad said it would provide mar- environmental pr- protections and cost-sharing opportunities with land surveying and pinpointing new water sources. So, you know, the uh, Hopedale got 85 plus 20, and the railroad got the rest, which is... Less than the majority of it. That's the railroad got like, or that quick maths. It got like twenty five acres, which isn't a lot. Uh, <laughs> and did it say what they wanted to do there, or? Uh, it just says they not? want to build an industrial site, and also then the deal continued. To the railroad decided it would pay about half a million for around forty acres. Uh, originally, the town approved of purchasing the entire lot, and then this whole debacle started. But. <laughs> Yeah. Whoops. <laughs> uh, Worcester Superior Court will hear the motion filed by the Hopedale residents. I'm wondering if that's going to go anywhere. Uh, the Grafton and Upton is is. I mean, it's a very little short line. It's coming back from the dead. This would probably help them a lot, and I don't know what not getting this deal would do to them. Nothing good, I assume. But I'll probably just go somewhere else. Yeah, they would probably go somewhere else, but it's Hopedale is sort of a, a an important part of what they're trying to do. I think it is their far end of track. Uh, I don't know. Either way, we'll we'll have to see. I'm sure we'll circle back on that. Yeah, I mean, kind of a bad spot to pick if you're picking the uh, area right next to a park. Yeah, <laughs> but the area of the park yeah. happens to be next to their train tracks. I'm sure they don't have a lot of room to choose from in a suburbanized Massachusetts. Very true. Which I would like to go in rail fan. But I mean, these days. yeah, we've we've never seen. I mean, at least I have never seen them yet. I responded to a comment on a video a while ago uh, of somebody chasing them, and I was like, "So, how did how did you?" Uh, how do you know when they're going to go? And he gave me instructions, and I've forgotten them. But I can find that comment again, <laughs> well, probably. Ah, uh, yes. He gave you the keys to success, and you forgot them. Yeah, I know. I Just just throw me in the trash. I don't know. Uh, Alright, uh, Tyler, I want you to take care of your two little stories here. I, I mean, obviously, the, the shorter right. one first, and then I want to understand what's going on with SP-982. Yeah, okay. Well, we, we got the very blessed story first. Um, yeah, cats, 
We all love them. Our feline companions, and one of them has caused a little bit of chaos in Britain recently. As you can see, Stubborn Cat is too much for the high-speed train. It's been too much to stop it for two and a half hours. How does it take two and a half hours to get a cat off a train? Uh, it took two and a half hours for one of the bozos on the platform to realize, hey, why don't we just put a trash can next to the train so we can jump down on the trash can, and then they can I mean, jump off the just train. Get a really, just get a really big stick. I'll get the cat yeah, off in Yeah, I was going to say, I feel seconds. like uh, I was honestly, like, hold on. The only problem with just hitting it with a stick is you might jump up and hit the overhead wires. Well, then you just have fried cat. That's, Wear rubber it's gloves. Easier to scrape, oh. It's easier to Jesus. scrape a crispy kitty off the top of the train. There's oh. more than one. There's more than one way to scrape a. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Hey, remember when he said everyone loves cats? First of all, first of all, I'm I'm you're definitely how... allergic. So nah. this is how you know <laughs> it's in Britain. It. <laughs> Anyhow, suck it. Here's how you know it's in Britain. This one cat, something you could easily just move, delayed this train for more than two hours. Because yeah, the it, they also, not, not just that, but they brought out a second Pendolino set to take the passengers that were supposed to be on that service. I, I mean, at least they did that. <laughs> at least they did that. But, like... Imagine all the passengers just sitting, looking up at the cat, like, come on, just please, I gotta get to work. <laughs> Fuck off! Fuck off the train, mate. I gotta go to work. Fuck off the train. It's it's Tuesday. I got a meeting. It's fucking Tuesday, isn't it? (laughs) The cat. Trying up for this train with a cat on it, bro. (laughs) Cat on roof, bro. The cat is like, I see no god up here. I see no queen up here other than me. (laughs) Other than me. All all right. So, past the, uh, the more... to, like, climb up on top? Well, you don't want to get well, fried. Yeah. You can disable the overhead wires. You can turn them off for a minute. Um, That's a possibility. Yeah, yeah, and you want to shut down the entire network for a bit? Why the fuck would you have the whole thing set up to one off switch? I mean, it's, it's in a station, well, so it might be, like, the whole station. Yeah. I mean, but... A five-minute delay bro, for everything bro, in the station bro. versus two and a half hours because the cat won't get off the damn roof. Wait, Wybold, are you suggesting? Are you suggesting that we distribute the delay evenly among everyone that's in the station? Oh I suggested a really big if stick, a, but that was met with opposition. If it's a five-minute <laughs> delay for everybody rather than a two-hour delay over one train for yeah, a cat, that's not communism. Deal. That's just being decent. That's our delay, comrade. <laughs> That's just being that. reasonable. Also, I you, guys are saying, you guys are saying, you know, it could be the whole station. The Northeast Corridor's overhead wires are segmented. I guarantee you these ones are too. No, I know. It, obviously, it's not I the whole guarantee. thing. We but don't know how they do things like, in, bro, in Britain. In it's Britain. Britain. It's fucking Tuesday. <laughs> All right, anyway. because like, of the cat. Uh, any, any Trades like... Besides the cat I want to take... Um. Yeah, we we might get a new running Southern Pacific Steam Loco in preservation. Whoa, SP. Uh, recently, sighing. 222 sighing number 982 deeply. was moved from its area at Minute Maid Park. Um, <laughs> cool. On February 28th, <laughs> Thank you. the Houston Astros and the JCs donated the locomotive to restore it to operating condition. Wait, what? Was that a baseball stadium? What? Yeah. 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 Is it the same baseball stadium that every time they get a home run, the little general thing runs around yeah. the top? Uh, oh my god. Sure. Oh shit. It, okay, I, it's dead. Sighing very, very deeply at this. Why? So it's it's been moved and uh, I know things that I can't talk about on the podcast. Oh no. <laughs> man, I'm not holding my breath. Isn't this the one that had the, the tender fiasco with Heber? Uh, yes, the tender is at Heber currently. <laughs> oh, nice. Um, that's an ongoing thing. Ah, uh, lovely. That, that's a good place for it. Uh, I'm really not holding my breath. Yeah. Is that I, I'm just really 
actually yeah, wondering yeah, where yeah. in the world are they gonna run it to justify I'm having a. <laughs> what is it? Is it, is it a two ten two? Yep. Yeah. Oh well, god. It's a deck. Oh. Okay. Is there a point in time where you will be able to talk about them? Potentially. Yeah. All right. So I, me there's put a chance. It this way, put it this way, I have a feeling that before I can reveal any of the things that I am privy to, there will be more articles on this locomotive in a very Western Maryland scenic type vein. Oh, no. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Cool. This, this, we have a be, of the West. this could be an interesting thing to observe. Let's just say that. Yeah. <laughs> This will be neat to see where this Hey, goes. We, we need something to float us for the next few years. Oh, God. All Has right. 1309 pulled passengers yet? No. <laughs> they still need to... Was it a million or two million for the... Oh, that's right. The FRA shut them down because it's too big for the railroad. If only somebody had considered that. <laughs> they, they need, like, 500,000 ties. Or something like that. Yeah. Like, Let's go. <sighs> Western Maryland Phoenix becomes a logging line. Don't... <laughs> uh, <laughs> Western Maryland becomes American Railroad. Oh, we could we could give them the logs that the DNS pulled down earlier this year or last year. <laughs> oh yeah, great. Actually, <laughs> that'll piss off everybody. What is the DNS doing this year? That is a discussion that we might save for another day. Oh really? I'm interested to hear some thoughts. Yeah. Okay. I was I was gonna discuss that a little bit. Well, with the Kyles? Uh, not with the Kyles. I meant just as a podcast curve. I'm interested to hear some other people's thoughts on the new schedule. Oh, okay. I just wanted to, to, to blow out the rest of these articles here. I mean, I've got one more. Well, it's really a double article, but it's talking about the, uh, the Lackawanna cutoff. Amtrak wants to run on the Lackawanna <laughs> cutoff. Naturally, the Lackawanna cutoff is not finished yet. Uh, but it's just, it's one of their... there's a lack of money. Yeah. I love this. Um, ur- uh, U.S. Representative Matt Cartwright, who is made to reestablishing the service a priority, urged against too much optimism. Quote, you have to take that with a grain of salt because we've heard this kind of thing from Amtrak management before. Uh, mm. uh, they want to link up Scranton so they can have access to the southern tier of New York, Binghamton, and all that makes great good sense. But they're the gung-ho rail guys. They're not the people who pay for it. It could happen. I mean, because we've got a lot of political muscle in New York that would like that. So, yeah, so they basically want to connect Binghamton, and it would make sense for them to go through Scranton, but at the same time, the Lackawanna cutoff has been worked on basically as long as we've had this podcast, uh, and they've made very little progress since we've had this podcast. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, they they have to rehab the Rose the Roseville Tunnel, uh. So, yeah. Now it's the the ten year transportation plan in New Jersey doesn't include any money for the project either, so, uh, it only lists funds addressing an extension of seven point three miles along the cutoff between Port Morris and Andover. Yeah. Basically, uh. That's yeah, basically, uh, New Yorkers and uh, Amtrak want trains to run across the corridor, but New Jersey, who is the ones that have to foot the bill for it, uh, don't feel like doing that. So, unless they get some, some federal dollars in there, uh, I, I'm not why seeing that you, happening. Why don't you get some federal dollars and also stop hitting yourself? <laughs> <laughs> I just love the submitted photo for this. It's like... What? Perfectly nice tracks and nothing. Oh yeah, per- perfect. The, the top of start. Perfect concrete tie tracks, just sitting there without gravel on dirt. No trains are ever going to come there. Uh, it's not great. It, 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 it's like that. Uh, anyway, I mean that about wraps up all the news. Unless there's something else little we want to poke about, I I threw my last thing in my terminations. So it it and it's a fun one. So let's do our latest Dragon and Track, our fun little mini game, and round out the show. So it's a fun little mini game, and you're gonna enjoy it. Yeah. 
So, what do we think is the latest train on Amtrak? I think I just found it. Hmm? What's today? Sunday? Um, or no, it's Saturday, sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh. Hmm. Oh, yeah, I found it. I'm going to guess the Capital Limited. Yeah, the Capital Punishment. Northbound Capital. Capital punishment. That's uh, a. We, we don't have a northbound. Would you like the southbound? Sure. Okay. I want to guess the westbound Late Shore. Westbound Late Shore Limited. That's a good guess. Uh, oh wait. Yeah, there's the there's the westbound. <sighs> TJ. I'm going to do Westbound Zephyr. Westbound Zephyr. Good choice. And Tyler? Uh, eastbound Zephyr. Eastbound Zephyr. Okay, so the Zephyrs are actually right about to pass one another. Uh, oh my god! Yeah, they are... They are... Uh, that junction? Between, about right. They are between Glenwood Springs and Granby. Uh, and they're both really? on time. Oh. oh, damn! That's impressive. Yeah, both of them. Yeah, both of them. Uh, the Zephyrs actually do okay time-wise. The Westbound Lecture Limited Dude, is sometimes five gets fucked. Oh yeah, the Westbound Lecture Limited is also on time. The damn. Uh, Tyler, what was yours? Uh, I was doing the. East oh right, Zephyr. sorry. Those two were those two were out of the way. Uh, I do want to say the Capital Limited to Washington is two hours and eight minutes late. And it's Ooh. almost the latest train on Amtrak. The Cardinal is two Damn. hours and five minutes late. Damn it! And <laughs> the Southwest Chief is two hours and oh. 17 minutes late. It's always the Chief. At Gallup, New Mexico. It's actually almost okay. in Albuquerque. Uh, as long as it's the chief, I was gonna do my. I was gonna do cardinal. It's like no, I'll do capital limited. I think I did cardinal last. Yeah, the, the cardinal is is three mi is doing three minutes better than the capital limited. Uh, also, the lakeshore limited is an hour late, and there's an acela that's. Oh wow! Ooh, twenty two minutes late, and it's in the red uh -oh. already. <laughs> uh oh. Yeah, I I noticed I noticed like the acela can be like five minutes late and be marked as red. Yep. And just imagine That's if they tough. had to deal with a cat. And, like, <laughs> it, that would be a service disruption. It would be a beautiful um, service disruption. But, like, you know, like, then, like, there's yellow. Sometimes they'll be yellow if they're, like, half an hour, an hour mm -hmm. late. Then red if it's, like, over an hour late. Black if it's just, it's black if there's just no hope. <laughs> I would like you guys to know that the Canadian is 28 minutes early. Good job, Because it's, it's, it's in Canada. How are they manage that? We are in Which votes for the opposite. It should be, like, a day late. Yeah. yeah. Canadian. It's wrapped all the way back around. No. <laughs> it's come full circle. Canada is perhaps the only first world country that has worse transcontinental <laughs> passenger rail service than we do. Yeah. yeah, they have the one line. To be fair, most countries and it's don't always have... late. <laughs> to be fair, most countries don't have transcontinental passenger service at all. Oh, absolutely not. I'm just saying, <laughs> like, I, it's like if if we're bad, there if there's anybody worse off than us for passenger rail, it's Canada. Yeah, it's us and Canada is... and Australia and maybe Russia if you count it. Okay, but here's yeah, another I could question. see Russia. If you are riding a train across the country, are you really in a hurry? <laughs> no, but you still want to get there I'm on time. Yeah, you, you'd but like I to mean, reach there on some point, or some type, type of schedule. Yeah. Sometimes anyway, next country would be nice. What if you're going on vacation for a week? Well, then, well, you, then you don't want the train to that point, You don't want the train to At that too. point, it's just part of the adventure. <laughs> yeah, but you still like to stick to a schedule. It can be, it can be slow without stopping. Uh, but anyway, right. All right, let's wrap this anyway. show up. Why will? Uh, here comes the Silverton up from Redacted. Oh God, damn it! Here comes the Silverton. <laughs> no throwing coal. <laughs> 
I'm I'm throwing out an article, which is just fantastic. Russian diplomats forced to hand car back from North Korea. <laughs> Wait, you changed it. I, I changed it, but it was it was a couple of different things. But I I wanted to settle on this one because it gets a thing out of the way. The ministry had, had been working at the embassy in Pyongyang, and the borders had been closed, and they had to they had to use a hand powered railway cart for over a mile to get it across the border. <laughs> That's hilarious. Anyway, Tyler. Oh no. I don't think this worked as I want it to, but uh, Bonk, go to New Haven. Thank you, Amtrak, for this wonderful blunder. I don't think it worked either. No. No, you can't show that. Uh, <laughs> you know what I We're mean. not. We're just providing a link. It's, uh, t- uh, technically, the I don't think the link like works. <laughs> it's been nice It also doesn't you. work. All right. I, I need to... Uh, I'll go find the Instagram <laughs> Uh, Hashtag cancel bombs three two one. Oh wait, I got it. I got it. Don't worry, I got this. Uh, my turn. I don't know why I'm helping. I got oh a link God. that works. No. <laughs> we're not the ones that made it. That's Strasburg. Yeah, we're also not the yeah. ones that replied to it. Fortunately. <laughs> uh, all right, TBA. I'm literally in a tank, and you're not. It's the best argument I've ever seen. <laughs> All right, TJ. Uh, my termination is double mask, but do not double wrap. Uh, they do opposite uh, of each other. Uh, so uh, unless you want to find out the hard way, uh, don't double wrap, but do double masks. Stay this is, safe, everybody. This is actually why Virgin like doesn't have, have trains right anymore. now. Yeah, they 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 thought that someone instead when someone said double mask, they thought they meant double wrap, and then the condoms t- caused too much friction, and then they broke, and then now UK doesn't have Virgin trains anymore. So yeah, I mean to be fair, they wouldn't be Virgin anyway, but but you know the the child support payments means they can't keep the trains anyway. Well, now they're the alimony trains, not the alimony <laughs> trains, <laughs> and they call it the alimony alimony train. Now arriving on track one, the Alimony Limited. Now arriving on track five, my bitch ex wife. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Run and hide. Anyway, I'd like to thank everyone for coming on and tuning in and all that jazz. And I will see you guys again in a couple of weeks. Bye. Bye.